Okay. Let me pull up chat here. So, I'm going to be going over Sunshine, because that is next week's map. And I got asked to do multiple Metalworks map reviews, which made me glad that I streamed it and published the VOD. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and just do a Sunshine review, so anyone who needs it, I can send this to. So, the way this is going to work, I'm going to start off with callouts, and then go into the start of a round, being the rollout and then the mid-fight. And then from there, I'm going to talk about stuff that might happen during a round, going coast to coast pretty much, from disad on your own last, to evens, to pushing out, all the way to pushing into the other team's last. All right, let's get started. So hello, Axelor, how are you? So, callouts. Uh, of course, left and right spawn. Um, this area is usually just top left or top right, depending on, of course, if you're pushing or defending. You have the point. Now, this usually gets called behind point, but again, it's like a matter of perspective, because sometimes that gets called behind point. Um, like if, for instance, you're, you're holding, so behind or in front of point. This really should have its own its own name, but uh, I call that like catwalk, I think. Just something to that effect. You have barrels, boxes. Uh, important to call because there might be like a gun lurking around there. Um, of course you have right. Excuse me, dungeon. And left. And I'm trying to think. That's probably all the callouts on last. Um, so, top right connects into lobby, as does right. This little hiding spot does not have a name that I know of, but uh, something to check when you're clearing right lobby. Of course, you have lower lobby with the pack that connects into dungeon, and this whole area is dungeon, which connects into second. Of course, you have a shutter door, so it's shutter. Up here is bats. You have the point itself. You have plat up here. Could potentially call this concrete as well. Um, over by lower lobby. The uh, left door here connects into valley, which connects into mid. Um, of course, you have the fence. Oh, barely made it up there. You have the fence. You have choke. And this area is cafe. The forward spawn as well. Um, and yeah, Choke Cafe and Valley all connect into mid. Another hiding spot you gotta check. But uh, you got Cafe into mid, Choke into mid, and Valley into mid. I know some uh, Europeans will call, I think, this particular positioning, like flowers, or flower box or something. Um, not really something that gets used in North America so much, but I uh, can mention it at least. All right, now you're on the mid. Um, the actual structure above the point is called Bell Tower. Or just Bell for short. Um, usually when I'm calling damage, if there's someone taking damage on this thing, I'll call that Shed. And then these little buildings on either side are each called Tetris. Um, I tend to call this concrete on mid as a well, um, which we'll get to in, when we talk about mid fights. And then of course you have under point. Um, what else? I think that's kind of it for all the spots, or all the callouts. So let's talk about the mid fight, and first we got to talk about the rollout. So there's two main rollouts. Um, So, as a demo, you can roll out Valley or Choke. Uh, valley, you can also just jump over the fence and jump to mid like a so. Or, from the only difference between the rollouts is from Bats, you would then instead jump Choke. Um, your demo rollout and combo rollout can be kind of independent. 
excuse me. And what I mean is um, just because a demo is rolling out Valley does not necessarily mean the combo has to. Um, but the combo can. So as a combo, same rollout, just through left side, through bats, and then uh, come up to Valley. If you're doing the Valley rollout, but most of the time teams will just default rollout choke. Um, I guess now's as good a time as ever to talk about the benefits and drawbacks of these different rollouts. So as a demo, um, Sunshine mid early on can be very difficult just because uh, you're oftentimes quite unhealthy, um, especially if you're not consistently hitting like a ramp slide here. You might be taking some crater damage and pretty weak, and soldiers can just like fast roll out on you uh, through valley. They can like hit a ramp slide here and uh, do some type of fast rollout to either commit on you or fade and get damage or whatever, but uh, you're usually pretty unhealthy and choke can be quite vulnerable. Um, so oftentimes demos will roll out Valley, which this season was my default rollout, but uh, I did have to switch it up and I'll explain why in a bit. Um, you're healthier, you have less vision and you're a little bit more committed to playing left-sided rather than being able to play right-sided. Um, but you're, you're, again, less vulnerable to, to early aggression, and it can give you just a nice foothold. Uh, as far as the rest of the combo goes, um, you show up later than the demo, so it's not so much about like a fast soldier you have to worry about, but um, you do have to worry about, uh, especially if you're playing a left-sided mid, which I'll explain later, um, this whole walk-up, um, you can t eat a lot of spam. Uh, so like as a demo, it's pretty easy to like hit both scouts on shed or something, see where their medic's walking and just shoot a sticky where they're walking to and like reliably hit their med for like maybe even like 80 or 90 damage on some mids. So it can be pretty bad for spam. And if you notice that you're losing a lot of mids because of the spam, then uh, you might want to switch it up. And Valley would be a little bit better for that. Um, as, and you can continue to play left-sided. Um, that way. So another like spam angle, just nasty stuff. Um, so yeah, those are the places you can roll out and why. And now we're going to talk about how you play the mid. So basically, um, Sunshine, you tend, you're going to want to pick a side pretty much. Um, you can either play left-sided, play right-sided, or play a kind of reactive mid. So if you want to play a rotational mid, um, because you find that your team is better at like isolating picks and like getting positioning quickly, then you can react to whatever side they're choosing and then go to the opposite side, so you rotate. Or you could play to meet whichever side they go. So again, playing kind of centrally reacting to whatever side they're going and then rotating to meet them. The downside of a reactive mid is uh, you have you have to react, of course. So you might be giving up some positioning um, just to be able to tell what they're doing. Uh, whereas just picking a side, um, you can get into positioning earlier on because you're like, you already know what your choice is pretty much. Um, so Positioning wise, as far as like meeting goes, left sided, um, or not even positioning, let's talk about like pacing first. So meet mids are gonna be very fast. It's gonna be very reliant on your soldier bombs and coordinated aggression of just pretty early onto the mid. Um, you're probably gonna wanna commit onto them. Um, so in the case of like a left sided mid, if I roll out Valley, let's say, and their demo rolled out choke, to try and like shut out valley which is another downside of valley is like it's easier to kind of spam out and harder to to enter through but anyway let's say their demo rolls out choke plays left side i get through valley by this point their demo might be like pushed up here maybe even like that would be kind of extremely aggro for them but uh, you never know uh, but either way spotting that positioning 
Like, it would be a fantastic time for my team to just be going, soldiers bombing in, and then as a demo, I would be committing across with my combo, um, just nuking them pretty much. And then for the right side, um, similar thing of, you know, once you can tell they're meeting, um, pretty early on you're going to want to be able to bomb your soldiers and uh, walk forward off the, uh, off the space. As far as rotational mids go, this is where I uh, I have an opinion that I don't see very often, actually, at least in, in the way people play. But basically, the main thing you're looking for is uh, this walk up past Tetris. Uh, depending on how bad the spam is, your beam might need to rotate behind Tetris, which is a great time to bomb actually. So, you know, if you're playing the mid, especially like get damage on the medic or something, and you notice, because by this point you can see I'm already like kind of walking up and uh, and taking this space. Like by now would be a fantastic time if they're meds behind Tetris or just wherever, like they're clumped up in the corner. Great time to be bombing. Um, get aggro, maybe I just kill their demo or something. Um, yeah, it's all about getting that advantageous positioning, pushing them into like a corner, and then pouncing, I guess. If they're just as fast as you are, and you don't have that option, then it's about uh, isolating players and securing picks that way. So let's say like they mirror us pretty much one-to-one, -one, like both demos are across point or whatever, um, but we notice one of their scouts or something. Um, let's say actually... We haven't walked up quite yet. One of their scouts over rotates and like tries to play shed or something. That's a perfect opportunity to just focus them down, get that pick, and then try to win the mid off of that player advantage. Um, so yeah, of course, as with anything, high ground is important. Uh, spamming high ground is important as a demo. Um, but what I was going to say about uh, rotates is since you are playing for this positioning, there are going to be times where you need, like, say you lose some guys, but, like, maybe you kill their medic and you need to, like, bunker up, then, yeah, backing up to, like, cafe or choke or something is uh, great. But I think in cases where you do want to commit, instead of, because this is fantastic high ground relative to down there or down there, um, I think instead of continuing to rotate to the low ground, um actually committing across with that high ground is probably better uh, but also if they are over rotating so let's say you know you keep rotating they drop down towards your choke uh, this would be a fantastic opportunity to not rotate any further instead turn back and meet them because you have high ground they don't uh, they're kind of backed up into a corner should be a fantastic opportunity for you so um so having this height kind of central on the point is uh, is something that you would like to have. Uh, not all mids you can afford to just stand there the whole time. You're going to die. But uh, in those cases where maybe they keep rotating, you can turn back and meet. Or maybe you have an opportunity to bomb. So instead of um, crossing into them left-sided with the bomb, you just cross across point. Um, things like that can uh, help make it a little bit better. But in general... Um, it's all about playing a side, and there's different ways to do that and different ways that'll look, but uh, it's still ultimately about, about playing that side, and then it's either teams will be rotating or they'll be meeting. Uh, one minor note as well about the mids. If you do like a full rotational mid where the other team, like teams basically switch sides, uh, but you have a massive advantage, and let's say their medic like escapes behind, um, it is pretty common, at least way more common on, than on any other map, for the team to just stack cap um, and then push onto two and then cap two and then already be pushing into last. And you can get like very fast rounds doing that. So if it's an opportunity where they're down a bunch of players, their beam escapes behind, definitely look for that as an opportunity to just win around straight up by uh, capping quickly. And keep in mind, like, their exit strategy is probably going to be through Valley almost always. 
because uh, that's the only way they can duck into lobby. So uh, as a demo, yeah, trapping that up. Uh, you might just get a free drop if they try and get out anyway. Um, so yeah. Oh, and I'm being asked to cast today. I'm going to say sure. Okay. Um, what next? That's the mid-fight. So um, now let's talk about this at last. So we're going to go coast to coast, talk about the different holds on the different points um, going forward. So as with any disad, if you have time to set up a gun, then set up a gun. Um, now, if, of course, just gun outside the shutter is going to be the fastest. And usually you build that gun first before moving it ever. Um, even if you think you have time to move it to a better spot. But there are going to be better spots if you have a surplus of time to set. Um, so the classic example I bring up is, like, let's say they used on two but killed your medic. Um, you know it's going to be a good, like, 40 seconds before they can rebuild that Uber, which means you have plenty of time to, to get a gun set up and all sorts of things. Um, but good disad gun, this is quite nice uh, just because a lot of the time the Uber, which oftentimes comes top left, will jump right past it and have to turn around, and it can be kind of awkward for them. They might end in a bad position. Um, I found this gun on top of crate to be pretty annoying to deal with. Um, other people have said it's not so bad. Um, but yeah, up on top of crate can be uh, kind of nasty. But uh, those are the two ones that I can think of that uh, people will move their gun and disad. Usually it's just outside the spawn or like next to crate or something here. Um, and as far as kites go, um, so usually you do kite into spawn um, when at a certain level. If you can afford to just kite behind point instead, that is usually better. Um, and oftentimes on sunshine, it depends. If if you're uh, you're gonna have to like judge it yourself. But if you are playing against, like, maybe lower skilled teams or something, um, or just lower division teams, you might be able to actually, um, instead of kite the Uber away, you can kite it up to the opposite side and work with whatever players were holding this opposite door to shut out their flank. And their Uber might not chase deep enough to actually catch you guys. And then you're, like, in a great position to, to fight the point. Um, people aren't just hold up and spawn that won't always be the case and um if it's not if you find yourself getting caught to ubers when trying to like kite up um then yeah you're gonna have to back into spawn uh this window these windows serve as a great little tool for information um if they pop through top left their demo spams you out but you notice their demo just walks past you can come right back out left and this is probably like the best position to have is this high ground top left not something you're always going to have of course but uh if you can get it it can be kind of nice but uh yeah just spotting whatever side is safe to come out and then as a team exit out that side if there's any like players caught or out of position then of course focus them down but by that point the uber should be fading and you can take a post uber fight hopefully not having lost anyone in the uber and hopefully holding the point um pyro not so much used on this last um i've seen gun pyro actually in a match of mine in advanced which did work um with the gun here um which i think is a sound choice because you can just spam this out duck into spawn um pretty easily you don't have to die for it or anything but uh heavy of course good class to have on last um anything i'm missing i mean just normal last stuff so like you know having soldiers coordinate to bomb the point when uh they try and cap having sticks on the point just normal last old stuff that is not specific to sunshine um and then as far as where the people are standing usually flank scout on engineer could be pocket scout if pocket scout spawned sooner and it's like 
whatever that's too <laughs> a scout on engineer is all you have to worry about um typically roamer will be holding uh watching dungeon and watching top right ready to jump away when pressured pocket can peek into this door a little bit and jump away um holding top left and then demo is going to be back with heels of course um ready to either kite behind point or back into spawn so that's disad last let's talk about evens on last so you want a sentry gun uh, also on evens and where are you going to put that so this is actually where i'm not super certain um because the, the the place you want guns are places that a watch doorways and b deny bombs those are the big the big things um so there's three spots i know of um, that get used there's either behind point looking this way which is going to deny every single bomb if your med is here on point here or on point here between these two i'm not really sure which is preferred this one seems easier to spam to uh to soldier peaks but these soldiers are also going to be taking damage from it so it does still wash the doorway this is going to be harder to get spammed out from there probably actually uh you might be able to get some splash on it actually but if you have to commit out of the doorway it's going to be a lot harder to spam uh, which we'll touch on later. And then the centralized sentry gun is usually like an anti-sniper. At least I learned it as like an anti-sniper hold. But uh, I've seen a lot of teams, and my team as well, kind of adopt that as the default just because it is so brutal to, uh, to try and deal with. So where are the other players at? So of course, uh, if you have a gun on the point then usually med's going to be, I want to say like around this area, ready to heal people, um, do whatever. Um, demo's going to be watching top left usually, but will rotate over. So if the big tell is like their combo rotates over, usually as a demo you want to rotate, hold this door, and that's part of the reason why they can't just deep peek this is because your your demo is going to rotate over to, to stuff that doorway. Um... And then this door is going to be largely the roamer's job. And then pocket soldier um, is going to be just either helping out the roamer or helping out the demo. Just very fluid class on this last. If roamer needs to resup because uh, they get spammed out, then pocket goes over, yada, yada. Just normal holding doors stuff, coordination. Um, once you have the gun up, this is a last you can snipe in. Sniping into this last is pretty decent. Um, it's like okay. Sniping out of it is also okay. Um, yeah, it's just up to your scout if they want to. Um, that covers all the positioning for evens. I do think, so with the, the default, the anti-sniper, which I do think does make a strong default hold if you pull it off. Um, with that... Your demo, like, sort of holds top left if they don't have a sniper. But the second they have a sniper, they're going to want to just be playing central. Uh, making sure that... Because you can adequately deny these doorways. Because keep in mind, um, with that anti-sniper, like, the sniper can peek really deep, right? Just get insane angles. But there won't be any players here. Um, and if they're ever peeking, like, this deep, then a soldier will just be landing on them, probably killing them. Um, likewise here, like, you can get some nice angles, but the second that you're, like, peeking here, you're eating demo spam, there's probably already just, like, sticks here if the roamer spots that, uh, the sniper's there. Um, yeah. So that's why, um, and then just playing central, uh, with your combo. Soldiers have to be very dynamic, jumping around, making sure they don't get sniped, trying to uh, land on and kill the sniper if they peek too deep. But uh, if you play it right, then the sniper shouldn't be too threatening. And sacks shouldn't be too threatening. I think you can spam the gun a little bit from dungeon, but you might have to like jump peek it. And also, this is just such a spammable doorway. Uh, it's kind of bad. So gun here, very strong. 
That's it for evens on last. Uh, let's move on to pushing out of last. So if for whatever reason you know that they're down like a bunch of spam, in particular their demo, then shutter is a great option. Bats can be a good option as well. You just don't have to worry about traps. You can get through pretty quickly and hopefully take space on plat. Of course, if they're close, you want to uber exchange, bait that out. All the normal pushing stuff that's not sunshine specific. Um, as far as popping through goes, I suppose you could do it shutter. It wouldn't be awful, but usually it's bottom left is the, the pop through door. And bottom left is also dryable. Um, of course, I say this every time I talk about pushing through any doorway. Uh, you have to watch out for like the main threats being you know traps and bombing soldiers. But if you identify that, take the dry appropriately, then uh, it is dryable lower left. And dungeon, you can do some stuff dungeon. Um, I would save that for like a, I don't want to say like a read, but uh, just kind of a throwing a wrench in the gear kind of play if you notice that... Uh, I don't even know what you would notice. I don't know. You could just do it as a mix-up, and sometimes uh, teams will be caught. But, uh, yeah, of course, dungeon is something that needs to get cleared by usually your flank uh, whenever you're pushing out, just because uh, you don't want to get back halved. But uh, those are the main doors to get through onto two. And now let's talk about disadd on two. So, disadd on two, you play bats. Um, and... Yeah, you play bats. A lot of the time, they're either going to come from... I mean, they could come from any door, really. Um, what is it? Caf cafe is a, a pretty common dry door. I think we got a follow as well. Hello, Grace. Thank you. Um, cafe is a pretty dr common dry uh, area. So... And it is kind of far away, so it can be nice for drives for that effect. But, uh, you know, having Roamer watching Valley, um, Pocket watching Calf, ready to jump away, um, and then sending your sack. And if you get anything, great. If not, you know, just get out, play last. Um, so, yeah, combo plays on bats in to set on two. Uh, as far as evens on two goes, uh, that's going to be plat. So your med's going to be here um, with pocket scout. Flank scouts, they can roam around, do whatever. If players go behind, of course, want to go kill them with uh, roamer most likely. But uh, they can help out close valley. They can come back towards the beam, play to help deny sacks, do whatever. Um, pocket is going to be watching cafe. And they can also jump to... Uh, defense of choke to help deny choke or stuff this um roamer's going to be watching valley and actually an important note here um so roamer will be sustaining themselves off that pack and then demo and pocket will be sustaining themselves off that pack as a roamer though if you're getting pressured you don't want to kite here um even though it makes sense because like the pack is there but uh, you want to pressure, or you want to kite here. Uh, the reason for that is, if you're there, then uh, players can actually like kind of peek you still from safety. Um, whereas on the other side, they have to like. This is consider this like the spam line, right? Where once they cross this, they're looking at your team and can get spammed. They have to cross that a lot to uh, to peek you. And if a scout peeks all the way there. And, you know, by this point, your demo will have rotated over. That scout is just caught uh, completely. Um, on the topic of demo rotating over, yeah, demo will play kind of plat area. Um, they can help deny choke. They could have anti-sack traps up. And if there's a... Uh, if the other team pressures Valley, then they will rotate over. Kind of play on point. Um... If you 
So sometimes teams will like sack a soldier onto the demo who's rotated over and at this point a little isolated because the heals are like kind of over there. Um, but you can just duck into the point and be uh, pretty safe. So yeah, rotating over to whatever door they're at. Uh, which includes calf as well. If you notice they're coming calf, this is like a great door to sink sticks on. Um, either just trap out their pocket scout so they just like have to use or drop him. Um, or once that guy's through, just you know, annihilate the players that we're following. So great doorway for sinks, and Valley's not bad for sinks either, for that matter. Um, I'll usually just sink it to get a carpet up, but that's like already, that's, that's getting too specific, it does not matter. Um, demo, rotate over to watch the doors, but uh, gonna be primarily focused on choke at first. So, that's gonna be evens on two, and that's for uh, sacks. So for counter sacks, um, Usually, I'm trying to think of where you pressure. So oftentimes, like fast sacks are pretty decent on this point, just because uh, it can be hard to get a great pressure window in. And by the time their combo is like rotated back to their counter sack positioning, it can be really tough to get a soldier in on them. So, um, yeah, usually don't get the opportunity to pressure too much. Maybe like choke. Uh, of course, if they like double sack, then great opportunity to to slow down, get some great pressure in. But uh, yeah, pressuring choke, uh, you can pressure calf as well. I'm trying to think, combo does not typically pressure valley, uh, just because it's such a slow rotate over there. But if for whatever reason, uh, let's say like you're already over here, maybe you were like meeting them valley because they were pressuring valley, you might be able to do, like pressure into mid for a counter sack through valley. It's Something that other teams will do to me, so I can't say uh, it's like pointless. So that's counter sack. Um, now let's talk about pushing out of two. So um, if they're down players, then choke is just a great door to dry. Honestly, choke is kind of the default. No, it's not the default dry door, but uh, drying choke is an option for sure. Uh, of course, the, the main two things you have to worry about again, and I usually like will pre-trap a soldier bomb uh, for any of these uh, pushes. Uh, Valley is another good dry. Um, and I would say Valley is one of... It's probably like the default dry. It gets kind of split, though, because Calf as well is a good dry door. Honestly, all of them are pretty decent to this effect. Uh, if you're coming Calf... You have the option to go left or right. Um, I'm not really sure which is better, to be honest. Um, my intuition tells me that like, for a dry, left kind of keeps you on your side more so, where you feel a little more on the other team's side over there. But I'm not sure how much that, that matters, honestly. As far as doors to use through, um, Valley's the big one if you want to pop through. Of course, if they're just like caught and it's like a timing window, then just use through whatever door's the closest. Choke is going to be usually, like circumstances where that's the case, it's usually choke. But uh, as far as just popping through, Valley's a good one. Um, yeah. And then, is there anything else I'm missing? I don't think so. Um, okay then, let's talk about disad on mid. So, there's going to be two main doors you could choose to leave through, or position to leave through. Either combo leaving cafe, or combo leaving choke. Um, so combo leaving cafe, the benefit here is you get much better close range spam on Valley, which I mentioned earlier is a good door to dry through. Um, downsides, you don't have like fantastic vision just because Tetris is in your way. Um, whereas Choke, you have much better vision. You can see like through these little uh, slits in the in Bell where they're coming from. If they're coming Choke, you can see Valley much better. Uh, and also you are just further away, which hurts for the spam, but helps for the chase. Whereas like their demo might be able to hit a miracle bomb and like things could get kind of sketchy leaving cafe. Uh, but both are good options. And then of course, just having your spot is important. 
um, having someone spotting cafe and someone spotting valley are going to be the big things just to know where they're coming from. Okay. Um, and also having a soldier up here can be nice for for the sack as they enter, but uh, you can mix it up. Um, don't want to be predictable, of course. So moving on to evens on mid. Let's talk about so let's talk about counter sacking first, since uh, that is the most that's the closest to like disad, I suppose. Um, so your demo is going to be in charge of choke and playing out by choke. Um, and you might need to kite back to heals, um, either here or kiting back over here, where you can still watch choke, watch everything. Um, if their combo pressures Valley, of course, you might need to split your attention there and pay attention to that as well. And then, uh, usually another player is going to be in charge of calf. Not often going to be the demo, but it is important that it gets watched. Um, so a player can't just run through. Um, yeah, heals probably back by Tetris, back by this area, just where you can heal people. Be relatively safe from a bomb. Um, yeah, as far as sacking goes and where you want to pressure, uh, Valley's a big one that teams will go for. And so here, you'd bring your combo Valley, spam off the player's holding Valley, just spam whoever. And from this position where you have Aggression Valley, they rotated their demo over, what have you, uh, you have some options. You can either sneak a player behind into Lobby, and then usually you know have them commit from behind with some other form of uh, pressure, which could, I guess, continue to be Valley pressure for that matter. Um, or you bomb a guy while their attention is focused elsewhere. Um, choke high bomb is going to be a big one there. But uh, yeah, those both start with Valley pressure. Can be a good option. You might be able to like bait soldiers as well. Um, this trap as well, I think, might uh, catch a player off guard, hitting them when they think it wouldn't. But anyway, um, yeah, Valley pressure can be good. And then Cafe Pressure is really the only other place your combo will pressure. And for this, there's a couple variations, which I actually mix up as well. Um, I don't just go for one all the time. You can either have your Demo in Calf or your Demo in Choke. So Demo Calf, um, you know, you're just looking for like spam pressure. It's going to be hard to full peek this, but uh, if their spam is not doing their job, then by all means, you know, take whatever space you can get. Um, the downside of this, of having your demo here, is it's pretty um, weak spam, I'll say. You can spam people on the pack. You can spam people trying to spam out calf. But a player, he like their demo is can hold this pretty comfortably. Um, so the spam's not going to be anything special. The upside, of course, is you're with your combo, you're getting healed, you're not, like, vulnerable. Um, whereas Choke, um, you have much better spam. Um, much better spam. You can actually, like, hit their medic, hit players. But you are also very vulnerable. Um... There's been a couple times this season that I've died just because once we send that guy, um, they immediately are counter-sacking a soldier onto me through choke. And you can, like, counterplay that with, you know, traps to predict it or whatever. But uh, point being, you're not being healed. You don't have a buff. Especially, like, if you take a stick yourself, now you're, like, 130 health, maybe 140. Um, that's sketchy. Um... So, better spam choke, but you're more vulnerable. Or worse, spam calf, but you're safer. It's really an, a, a choice to be made. But uh, cafe and valley are going to be the big avenues for pressuring for your sack into second. Okay. And I th as far as I know, this is a point you single sack into as well. Um, 
Anyway, as far as that goes, I think that's it for evens on mid. So, let's say your sack worked and you now have add and you want to push out of mid. So, uh, you have some options here. The go to dry door is going to be calf. Um, of course, the things you have to worry about being traps and cafe actually has some kind of nasty ones that you have to really look out for in particular. Um, these are a couple. And then, of course, just trapping the pack, tra all sorts of traps. But uh, spot those. And you do have to be worried about a soldier landing here as you're walking left. Uh, your attention's divided. So, like, my flow chart of pushing this is, like, start off, try and clear any trap above the door if it's there, or just scatter it. Trap this. By this point, my pocket scout's moving through, spotting traps. If this soldier lands, he's dead. Uh, start to move. And then from here, start spamming them out. It's all a matter of pacing. If you pace it correctly, calf is going to be the best door to dry through. Uh, choke can be dried through. And in times where you want to be pretty quick, I mean, obviously, uh, choke is just like the fast door. If they're like down players, you want to get in quickly. But if you want to get in quickly, but also like kind of safe, you can come choke and then go calf sided. Um, so you end up in this nice positioning, but uh, you got in quicker rather than like a long rotation through cafe. Um, Valley is okay. I don't know how good it is at drying. Uh, you can do it for sure, but this is often like a pop through door. Um, I just think if you are planning to dry, um, you're often going to want to just do it through cafe unless you're like already Valley or something. Um, as far as the pop through goes, one bomb actually I've, uh, quite enjoyed is a double sticky on here and then you like hit a ramp slide and from that you can like do all sorts of things like potentially even land bats like you saw um it's very far back though so your beam needs to be like almost in front of you when they use so that they can actually catch up and reflash you but uh, that can be nice if you're not hitting that consistently just like um, whoops, just a normal like double sticky jump or just any type of bomb. But I figured I'd showcase that one just because uh, I've gotten decent value out of it. Um, and I like it. Okay, um, and then of course, anytime they're caught, just use through. If you're a pocket scout and you peek and you see their medic is on plat, just use, bomb your demo, they're going to be caught. Um, absolutely. Uh, yeah. But that's drying into two, or not drying, pushing into two. Now let's talk about disadd on two. So you have a couple options here. Um, main ones being leaving cafe or leaving valley. So if you leave cafe, very safe door, hard to get used into, hard to get caught to an Uber. Um, but, you know, as is with those types of positions, worse spam, gonna be harder to spam them out as they're entering. That's the combo positioning, of course. Soldiers can hold the doors closer because they get to jump away. As far as combo valley goes, this is a very brutal spam into lobby. It's going to be very difficult for them to dry through this uh, lower right, which I mentioned way back on uh, pushing out a last. This is a, a door that you like to dry through, but uh, pretty easy to get through shutter. So if you do identify... Um, Let's say, like, with your early spotting, you see their beam and demo are there. Uh, definitely an opportunity to get your combo through shutter, because uh, that should be pretty easy. But, uh, yeah, close door, better spam, and a little more vulnerable to an Uber. Okay, as far as... What's next? Counter sack. So you just sacked your... Let's say you just double sacked, so you're down two. Um, how do you hold second? It's actually not too bad. Um, demo is going to be prioritizing bats and shutter, just making sure that players can't commit through there. And a player, this could be demo, this could be pocket scout, but a player needs to spot dungeon. Usually just from here is sufficient. As a demo, if I'm doing that, I just throw a sticky down there just so that they know, oh, this is being watched. I don't know if it's worth it, because they'd have to clear that sticky anyway uh, to even push, which would tell me they're there. 
It's a, a, you get the picture. But uh, demo or pocket scout spotting this is important. And then your pocket soldier, whatever soldier lived, is going to be watching lower right. And it's going to be very difficult for them to, to push lower right against a soldier on height. Um, yeah, and I suppose if they like super pressure that, then uh, you can rotate pocket scout over. But uh, that's counter sack on second. Um, let's talk about sacking. So first and foremost, when you enter lobby, you should just enter lobby through lower right. There's very little reason not to. Um, just make sure that when you peek this corner, you don't peek it close, because this is something that demos will like to trap. And if you're you know, peeking this close, you die. So you may as well peek this like further back. Uh, and there can be a sniper on this angle sometimes. So just have like your less important spotting classes, you know, doing the spotting. Uh, but then you can enter lobby. Uh, as a demo, uh, this is like a fantastic door to sink stickies into. Uh, if they are really aggressive, like this is super aggressive, but even like in the doorway, just committed through, uh, they might just die to that straight up and you have a pick to work with uh, for your pressure into last. Or, you know, entering lobby with add, pushing into last, you might have a pick to work with before you even use Uber. So yeah, entering through lower right is good. And then from here, you have all your options. Um, usually, if you can spam down the gun, this is something you're gonna wanna do. But uh, usually pressuring left is a good thing to go for. Uh, getting your demo over, they can spam those people out. And from here, just like spam out whoever's trying to hold the door, slowly take space. And if there is like, let's say a gun on the other side of point, then uh, you can spam that, potentially take that down. From there, like things are still going well, by all means, like take space left. There's gonna be plenty of opportunities where they're not adequately holding this right side door, right side for them. Um, and you can just straight up take space. From here, like deep pressure so much to the point where you're not even like sending your sack, right? You're just still pressuring for the sack because things just keep cascading. They're getting better for you. So like push the envelope uh, by all means. Um, so what's a good way to like illustrate this? Um, like fictional example, let's say you do like, someone gets caught up, right? right? Immediately like rotate over, start pressuring this doorway. That soldier that was watching this, let's say it was a soldier caught top right, that's the only soldier. They get spammed out, they have to go resup, suddenly you're taking space. You spam down the gun, this soldier doesn't wanna just bomb into like, you know, three players here, maybe four. Um, so they're just gonna like play longer range spam. From here, you can like take positioning. As a demo, trap out the point, maybe have a scout go to point as their sack, start pressuring point. Um, it's actually like pretty common to be getting forces from very deep left side pressure, uh, cat pressure, just the works, uh, just because it all kind of snowballs from uh, just a pick or something. Um, just playing that left side pressure correctly. If you do want to just like rip a sack, um, then you know you can do that. Bombing through dungeon, bombing. This is like a a common. Well, stickies knock back more than rockets, but you get the idea of jumping up here and then. Another rocket through there, which uh, then you could potentially peek the doorway, just make sure you don't get synced. Um, but yeah, left side pressure, very good. If you know like the right side specific guy is dead, then by all means try and do a similar thing right side. It is just a much easier door for them to spam, even though it is technically high ground. Um, it's just much more narrow. Of course, if they do have a sniper, um, like back here, then, you know, those pressures that I was talking about, much less of an option unless you want to just disrespect them completely, in which case I'm not taking responsibility for the consequences. But uh, yeah, I did mention playing Sniper into this last. Uh, that is something people will do when they have a tough time. Um, just going, the main way to do it is getting the kill on, you know, the person holding the door uh, in order to actually peek the door. So that first peek is going to be trying to kill that soldier. Um, might be trying to like kill a demo or a soldier here. If they're in that anti-sniper positioning, it's going to be a little difficult to do much with that pick. Um, but, you know, you can try. 
uh, dungeon peak as well, you might be able to get some people. So there's like the main ways you would approach the playing sniper in two last. Um, spy can be used as well, of course. I do think, um, I think the sap and sack double sack play is actually quite nice. You do see it in invite um, pretty often, especially on sultry, but uh, I think on any map it can work. On sunshine it can work as well. Uh, it is important um, to keep in mind who is on spy. It's usually better having a scout on spy if you're going to sap the gun and sack a soldier just because you don't want to be down both soldiers if you double sack. Um, but I think that's a play that's particularly strong if they have the anti-sniper positioning because that gun is all that is stopping a, a bomb from like being pretty decent just because their med is already so close to the door. Whereas like if you have to bomb all the way back here, then it's going to be much harder for them to, uh, or much easier for them to, to stop that or kite it away or just make it less effective. Okay. So we talked about sacking into last. We talked about counter sack, dis add on two. Yeah, so let's say you got some deep pressure. You got the cap time. You forced them to walk on point and use Uber in order to save the round because your left side pressure was just goaded. Well done. Now you just have to execute a full add last push. So, of course... Once you have your guys, you want to be entering lobby. And if it's ad that you already use but don't like have yet, uh, you usually want to enter lobby at around like 80% is kind of the rule of thumb. And this applies for most maps, actually. You want to get in position to use that Uber um, before you actually have it. Uh, because let's say it was, you know, let's say it's 30 ad, which is very playable into a last. You might have to focus them at a little bit or at least be concerned about that in the post but very playable uber percent let's say you have 30 ad if you're moving into lobby to use as you're at 80 percent then that means they're at 50 percent by the time you have that uber they're at 70 percent and you're using while they have 70 percent right exact same scenario exact same state of uber still 30 ad if you don't enter lobby until you already have that uber or you're 95 or something then they're gonna be at that 70 percent as you're entering lobby by the time you're actually in position buffed up to take that uber they're gonna be at like 90 percent or even already have and just by virtue of the fact that you entered lobby so late and waited until you had uber to get in a position to even use the uber or to start to get in a position to use the Uber, um, you might squander that ad. So just a little note there. Not Sunshine specific, but uh, something I'd figure I'd point out here. Uh, but yeah, the main Ubers here. Top right's kind of the bread and butter. Um, just bombing for this right side positioning. If you catch anything, great. Uh, focus down sentry gun. And then if you have enough Uber remaining, you can cross. If not, just end right side. And this is another great uh, sink as well thing to note um do not hug this left wall when you're about to use uber i can't demonstrate it here because i'm only one person but uh certain graphic settings in particular my graphic setting will show your shadow through that wall a uh, similar thing happens on like metalworks um but that is like the tell for me when i see like a pocket scout lined up there i'm shooting a pipe that is going to hit someone who is ubered of course but what it's going to do is juggle their demo sticky so he doesn't even get a bomb off he's like slow the uber is going to be worse only because the guy was hugging the wall and telegraphing before the fact what door they were going to use through and when so minor thing just avoid hugging the wall when you're about to use but yeah top right kind of a bread and butter uber left is a door that you want to take space in without necessarily drying yet course you have to watch out for traps uh if their demo trapped it but uh yeah a door you might want to take space in before using so that you're already pretty deep by the time you do use and then outside of that there's dungeon um dungeon is a door that's good to well you can actually take space or just use through um but dungeon is a great think of it as like a a process one 
or a gully wash main or a snake water lower in that they're doors that if you have a lot of time then you might want to get everyone buffed pick a, like the ideal doorway because you have that time but if you have like a a very tight opportunity window where maybe you could wait to take a better uber but you think you're going to catch them off guard by being really quick um or just off a fast transition you know, my neighbors are shooting off fireworks <laughs> um but maybe off of like a fast transition on two into last that's definitely your dungeon because this door is very quick and uh yeah you can bomb up choose whatever side you want to uh, bomb to and then if you have time to cross on dungeon you probably won't be able to cross so much that is unfortunate my uh my windows are already closed so i can't really make that any quieter um i think I think that's it. Uh, we talked about using in. I suppose I could focus on some like non-combo centric players, um, like your pocket, or excuse me, your flank. Um, if you're using two, through top right, you're gonna try to get through top left, um, or just left. But uh, their timing is gonna be very dependent on the Uber, and the the call of whether you're crossing or not. So if you are crossing absolutely get that flank through pinch the players that are all caught here if not that might not be an option and in some cases you might want to just rotate over to where the combo is just so that you can have all six people together here um on that side and like have a better commit um or just have them like lurk around for when you want to commit and then commit through left a lot of options but uh yeah just flank business um, I'm trying to think of anything like specific about pushing last. I talked about top right being kind of the default door. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just normal pushing last stuff that, uh, not really any quirks specific to sunshine. I'd say the one thing I guess I could mention is being worried about, uh, if you do cross, um, be mindful that they might just be lurking in spawn and coming out right sided. Um, which is something to keep in mind, something you might be able to like try and counter. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's it for Sunshine. Um, I probably could ramble on for longer, but uh, it's looking like this is a 57 minute VOD. That is an appropriate length, I'd say, for a demo review. Anyway. Hopefully this was useful. Uh, of course, if anyone does end up watching this and has any questions about anything I covered or anything I failed to cover, uh, feel free to message me on like Discord or something. Uh, yeah, that's going to be all for Sunshine. Fun map. Hope you guys enjoy it. And yeah, have a good one, everyone.